means we're wrong. I don't know why I keep saying that. I'm sure you get sick of it. Right, here we are. The most common oxidation states of cobalt are plus two and plus three. These questions were sent in, by the way, so I didn't make these up. Uh, calculate or complete the configurations of those two. Right, obviously, we need a um, purity table, and I'm looking at cobalt now. And cobalt is obviously 1s2. Oh, argon core. They're being nice to me, aren't they? So where's an argon core? That's argon core. So after the argon core, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It would be 3d7, 4s2. And so would this one. Okay, but I've got to knock two electrons off of that. So this one's just 3d7. And I've got three electrons off of that one. So this becomes 3d6. And everyone all right with that one? Nice warm-up question. Do we understand that? Are we good with that? Don't we get a thumbs up? Thumbs up? Are we all good? No, no one's saying anything. Tandy good, Wada, Amanda. All right, we're all good there. Okay, cobalt 3 and cobalt 2 form two complexes with uh, EDTA, uh, which is that weird thing, isn't that? There are some half equations. Use the data and table to read what happens, if anything, when separate ac aqueous solutions of cobalt and, and CODTA are left to stand in the air. Okay, oh gosh, you've got some horrible questions, haven't you? Which is good. This is what we want. We need nasty questions. I'm messing around up here with the, um, oh, the uh, reduction potentials. Okay, something's happened in the matrix. Kettler Hall, yes, you're welcome. All right, there you go. Oh, we should be quiet over there. Right, here we go then. Use the table. All right, so um, what happens, if anything, when separate solutions of I left the stand in the air? So we've got this guy, CO3, all right, and it gains an electron to form... CO2 and its electro potential is plus 1.84, 1.82. And this guy uh, here, CO, ED, oh, no, that's the other one, isn't it? Sorry. Oh, I was busy at the farm all day, so I'm a bit confused today. All right, so now we've got the oxygen one, which is this oxygen plus four hydrogens plus four electrons, someone. People keep coming. This is Rosejo. Okay. Give us two water molecules, apparently. Oh, God, it's so noisy. And this is one point, plus 1.23. Now, um, what do we want here? We want uh, cobalt-3. Use, if anything, separate solutions. Cobalt, I'll let the stand in air. So cobalt here, okay is going to stand in air, which is presumably oxygen, all right? Uh, and then, so the cobalt three is, oh, hold on, my, 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 uh, my thing's broken. One second, everyone, I do apologize for this. My, um, my uh, pencil, my, my, not my pencil, my, uh, my stylus uh, keeps making a noise. All right, not to worry. I'll be with you in a tick. Not to worry. Okay, 21 seconds. It's all gone wrong today, so don't worry. It's all going wrong for me. Uh, as I say, I was at the farm, and weird stuff happened at the farm. Okay, it's not weird, but it's just tiring stuff. I was there with this strange man, um, and he, oh, he just wouldn't shut up. And then he started talking to his uh, to his wife, and he just went on and on and on. Anyway, so there we go. So we should be with you in a minute. I feel I'm redoing some um, things at the back here. Okay, right now, here we go. Uh, where are we? This one. This should work now. Okay, I've got to make that small, make that big again. All right, so these are the two that we get. And what happens if uh, these aqueous solutions are left to stand in air? All right, these are the two equations. Now, obviously, uh, we've got cobalt, this one. So this has got to be on the left because it's one of the reactants, isn't it? Okay, and oxygen here, okay, is on the left as well. Now, 
what we've got though is an accurate solution. What happens if we leave it in there? Well, obviously we've got to flip this one around, haven't we? Because um, the cobalt is going to be reduced and this one must show an oxidation. So what I mean by that is this, we get rid of all this rubbish here. Okay, and I've got to flip the other one around. This one must be flipped around. So this becomes 2H2O. Okay, and that gives me O2 plus H plus, that's four electrons. And this is now minus 1.23. Add these two together. Uh, two minus three is nine. Eight minus three is five. And one minus one is that. So this is plus 0 0.59 volts and the equation for the reaction we have to times this top one by four so the electrons cancel out so this is four 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 add these so the final equation becomes four cobalts plus two waters give me oxygen plus uh four hydrogens plus Four cobalt two pluses. So what happens? Use the data to predict what happens. Well, the cobalt will react with water, cobalt three, and oxygen will be evolved. Are we okay with that? Sorry, a bit of a mess that one. But are we okay? Everyone's good with that. All right, well done. Oh, beside is not. What's wrong, dear? The question. Have, the questions have been sent on the group, by the way. All right, yeah, that's good. What's wrong, Basadi? Do you want to write it down, dear? quickly or you can unmute your microphone anyone else so we all good miss uh, not saying anything anymore for some reason Basali, what's wrong with that darling are we okay no 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 what happens all right i'll continue on and Basali will maybe get to me how do we know to add after flipping the sign right what we've got dear is these four things here these four things, oh God, that thing keeps going on. These four things are what we call re reduction potentials. These are reduction potentials. And in other words, going from this side, from left to right, there's a reduction because they are gaining electrons, aren't they? Gaining electrons. Does that make sense, dear? Is that all right, Basadi? Yes, no, maybe. All right. So they're gaining electrons. So only one thing can be reduced and the other thing must be flipped the other way. It must be oxidized. OK, if one thing's reduced, the other thing must be oxidized. OK, so if I pair up any of these two things here, any of these two half equations, OK, one must go that way and the other one must go that way. Does that make sense? All right. There you go. Now, the cobalt must be a reactant. So this must be on the left. It must be on the left because it's a reactant. Now, air, where's air? Let's stand in air. Air looks like this one, doesn't it? This is air. Yes. All right. Oxygen is air. All right. The other two are not air. So this one must be the one that goes the other way. Now, when we turn it the other way, the electro, uh, the um, cell potential ele E electrode changes sign because we get, we're trying to push it the other way. Now, is this is the cobalt system strong enough to push this the other way? And the answer is yes, because it is a bigger number. So the CO3 plus will become reduced and it is so strong at reducing it will actually um, cause the water to oxidize into O2, 4H plus and four electrons. Does that make sense? Uh, I hope so. And, and it's not the most intuitive subject, is it this? Solution of COEDTA, -E which is this one here. Okay, so I'm going to write this down. COEDTA -E minus, oh, that's not a minus there, is it? This is a bracket plus an electron gives the COEDTA, close brackets, two electrons. This is plus 0 0.38 volts. And again, uh, the oxygen system is 1.23 volts, isn't it? Yes. Now, so if I left uh, this guy to stand, 
and I had oxygen plus hydrogen plus four electrons and it gives me two waters okay minus 1.23 volts here yeah now what would happen which one oh sorry it's a plus 1.23 plus 1.23 volts yeah so now what will happen with that anyone would anyone be able to tell me anyone at all have a look and see those numbers and see what might a possible question uh, answer be okay what happens if i leave co edta uh, in oxygen this one does anyone see anyone what about the bottom one here oxygen reduces it no dear what must be on this is good try though well done on the left it must be this mustn't it because it's the reagents yeah this must be on the left yeah and this one therefore we must flip this one mustn't we but if we flip this other one co edta two minus this is 0 0.35 if we flip this one it's going to become minus 1.23 yes so let me write let me flip it anyway okay two waters okay are going to give me oxygen plus four hydrogens plus four electrons i'm going to times the top one by four and then add them and therefore my overall equation will become this edta minus plus two waters gives me four co edta two minus plus oxygen plus four hydrogens and now i add these two together now obviously i have not clever enough to do that so i'm going to get a calculator out and i'm going to say 1.23 minus and i'm going to add 0.35 and i'm going to get minus 0 0.88 so this one gives us 0 0.88 minus 0 0.88 so is the equation as i've drawn it is it feasible Will this reaction happen? Will uh, CO EDTA minus this guy react with water to give this guy and oxygen? Will it happen? Is it a feasible reaction? Yes or no? Anyone? No, it's not feasible. But what is feasible though? Well, the reverse reaction will be feasible going from this side to this side, won't it? Yeah. So if the question asks me what will happen with this guy in oxygen, you could say, well, this guy reverts to this guy because the reverse reaction is feasible. So the reaction as shown, as asked for, is simply not feasible because we get a negative number. OK, so uh, the E standard of the uh, CO3 plus is greater than the E of the oxygen. So in that case, there'll be no change to it. This will stay as it is will stay as is okay in other words there is no change here because the reaction is not feasible because it's a minus number the top one the reaction is feasible okay uh, cobalt will oxidize in aqueous solution it will give off oxygen it will it will um, reduce to four co2 minus uh, two plus but the other one won't does that make sense i know what you mean these are uh, these are a bit tricky but it, does that make sense now are we good there? Yeah, it's a bit, it is tricky though. Well done. Anyway, well done. Excellent. Everyone, well done. I'm proud of you all. Right now, going to the next question. Okay. Oh, it's only a small question, this. Right. So I'm going to select all of this. Oops, you don't see. And then I'm going to, if I can find my cursor, which I can't. Ugh, what's going on? Right. Connect that. Do that and delete all of that. And I can delete everything and we can start afresh, I think. No, we can't. All right. So select everything, delete everything, and paste this. This is the next one hydrated cobalt nitrate. That guy is a red solid that behaves like hydrated magnesium nitrate when heated. Describe in detail what you'd expect to observe when crystals of that are heated in a volume tube gently at first and then more strongly. All right. 
Uh, so what we're going to see here, this one looks like, um, don't forget to record for the other. I'm, I'm recording, yeah? This one does look hard, doesn't it? Hydrated copper ni uh, cobalt nitrate is a red solid that behaves like hydrated magnesium nitrate when, sort of, uh, when um, heated. Okay, first of all then, um, what happens when we do magnesium nitrate? Right, magnesium nitrate. This is, isn't this a, a lover six question? Magnesium nitrate. What's the first thing we're going to see? Isn't it? Okay. What's the first thing we're going to see here? Well, it's going to lose this water of crystallization, isn't it? Okay. So the crystals, they're going to, they'll appear that they're melting. Okay. But they don't actually melt. What happens is it just loses its um, water of crystallization. So what are you going to see that? Well, it's going to, if you imagine the test tube, there's the test tube. There's the magnesium nitrate. The water is going to come off, okay, because they're hydrated, and it will condense on the side of the test tube. So it's going to lose this. So the first thing you should say, you're going to see condensation on the sides of the test tube, yeah? Um, or you can say steam is evolved, I guess. Okay, you'll see that, okay? Now what happens is, well, this reaction, the magnesium nitrate, is going to go to magnesium oxide, it's going to go to nitrogen dioxide and oxygen, isn't it? So the equation for that is 2241. So the first thing I can see there is this. And so we're going to get brown fumes, aren't we? Brown fumes there. Okay. Um, that, as I say, when this happens, it will dissolve in its own water of crystallization. So it will appear to dissolve. Okay, it's dissolving in its own water of crystallization. And then, well, that will happen when the condensation and the steam is evolved. Next, you'll see brown fumes, okay, and you'll get oxygen evolved. Now, um, I'm, I can, I'm looking at the answer sheet here, and it, I don't agree with this next thing. It says O2 forms. Well, you wouldn't observe that, would you? I think that's a bad thing to say, uh, but the answer scheme says uh, O2 forms which relates to glowing splint. Okay, but I don't agree with that. A glowing splint. Okay, oh, that's an end splint. Now you only need two observations for the two marks. So you should have all managed the condensation and you should have all managed the brown gas. You should, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Describe the thermal stability of the group two nitrates as you go down the group. Right, now this, there's a lot in here, not to unpack, but as you go down the group, the uh, thermal stability, thermal stability increases, doesn't it? Okay, so it's harder as you go down the group. Does anyone want to tell me why? Why would the, what would the same thing happen for for metals further down group two? Yeah, uh, well, it's harder to do it. You need a higher temperature, Basadi. All right. So, for example, for barium, for example, you need you would get brown gas eventually, but you just have to do it at higher temperatures because they're harder to thermally decompose. Does that make sense? Are we good with that? Yep, good. Yeah, but they do do the same thing. What causes this uh, this increase in stability? What's the main thing that causes it? The increase in stability. Anyone? Quickly, guys, we've got, I don't know how many we've got to get through today, but we do have to get through quite a number of questions. All right, anyone know? Increase in iron polarization. It, Rizaldia, it's actually a decrease, isn't it, as you go down? Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. I can get these things wrong. Something hydration in the latter, I don't know. Vasadi. Now, can everyone look at what Vasadi's written there and have some sympathy for her? She's mixing up two different things, isn't she? <coughs> Do we understand that she's mis mixing up two different things? Uh, everyone okay with that? Can we see what that she's mixing up two different concepts? It says that in your notes. <laughs> I doubt it, dear. Unless I'm misreading the question. Does it say that in your notes? Does it? All right, then. Now, Vasadi and Laurel. One is greater than the other. 
<laughs> yes. All right. Now, let's get something straight. And I'm sure your notes are bad. I think you're conflating two things. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to have a I'm going to move away from the from these questions, okay? I'm going to do a lesson, a very quick lesson. Okay. <clears throat> There's group 2 chemistry. All right, group 2 chemistry. And what we've got to know about group 2 chemistry <clears throat> is the nitrates, the group 2 nitrates and the group 2 carbonates. We have to know something about these two. Now, the thing we've got to know about these things is thermal stability of these two, which I'll explain in a minute if you want, okay? Now, totally different concept is the group two sulfates and the group two hydroxides. Now, it's not thermal stability we have to know about those two. Does anyone, can anyone tell me what we have to know about those two things? Is it thermal stability? <laughs> no, exactly. What is it, India? Solubility. Thanks, Amanda. This is solubility, isn't it? Now, for want of a um, better way of saying it, thermal stability is about polarizing the uh, anion isn't it? But um, solubility, this one is about lattice energy. Lattice energy. And uh, what's the other thing? Lattice energy and hydration. Does that make sense? Yeah? So, if let me look at the um, questions earlier. When was the Rosetta? She said increase so, but sorry, uh, Rousseau was an increase in iron polarization. She was nearly onto it. She just got it the wrong way around. Vasali said something, hydration energy, and lattice something. I don't know. Now, Vasali was the one that was conflating it. Conflating means having two ideas and squashing them together wrongly 90% of the time. Okay, so do you follow me now, Vasali? It's nothing to do with hydration energy and lattice energy. Okay. Now, do you want me to go on explaining these two concepts, or are you okay with these two concepts? I'll explain them if you want. It won't take too long. It's beautiful. The um, hydration energy one is really interesting. Does anyone want me to do it? Guys, you've got to say yes or no. Okay. Laurel says, I'm assuming that means yes. Okay. All right. Uh, please teach the song of you thing next time. Explain. All right. Let me explain it now. Okay. Because education is education. Okay. Um, now, the thermal stability. Let's do the thermal stability first. Let's do this one. Let's call this one A and this one B. All right. So let's have a look at the, um, the things. Okay. Now, the top one is magnesium nitrate. There you go. And then you've got calcium nitrate. And then I guess sometime you're going to come across barium nitrate. Okay. And now all of these will thermally decompose, but it gets harder. Okay. These, in other words, it gets harder to decompose these. What we say is the thermal stability increases as you go down. They become harder. Harder to um, to break up. It's harder to decompose them. It's harder to decompose. Now, what happens is this. Okay, you've got a magnesium ion Mg two plus. You've got a calcium ion Ca two plus, and you've got a barium ion Ba. 2 plus. Now, obviously, the charge is the same as we go down these guys, okay, but they the ionic radius increases. So, as you go down, the ionic radii, because it's a plural, increases, okay. Now, if you wanted to say that in a fancy way, you say RMG2 plus is less than R. CA2 plus is less than RBA2 plus. Okay, so the ionic radius increases. I think I said that. So the ionic radius increases. Now, if the ionic radius increases, they've all got a 
charge of plus two. Okay, what happens to the charge density on these ions? Does it increase or decrease the charge density? Yeah, well done, Rosal. Decreases. Well done, everyone. The charge density decreases. Okay, and if the charge density decreases, what happens to their ability to polarize other things? What happens to their polarizing power? That also decreases. Well done. So let me pick a nice color here, this color. So their polarizing power decreases. Okay, so what we could say is the magnesium ion uh, polarizes the nitrate ion more than the barium ion. Does that make sense, all of us? Are we all good there? Yeah. I'm, the thing is, as well as understanding the subject, we've also got to put it into English, don't we? Which is often very hard. Okay, so the Mg polarizes the NO3 minus more than the barium. Okay, now I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go straight to the answer scheme. All right, and I'm going to pinch that because um, otherwise I will be here all day, won't we? So let's have a second snapshot. Da, 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 da. Right, I've taken a snapshot, and this is what the question paper, uh, the answer says. Oh, that's not good, is it? Make that smaller. Okay, let's move it up there, and now I can make it all bigger, like that. It says the cationic radius, which I think I said, but maybe I didn't, the cationic radius increases down the group, okay, which we drew there. Less polarization, distors distortion of the nitrate ion, decreases as you go down. Does that make sense? Their answer is a bit nicer than mine because it's very um, clear. So do you see that that's not the same as the other thing? Now, where else could we apply the, exactly the same argument to? Well done, everyone, for doing the thumbs up. Where else could you apply this argument to? Anyone? You apply exactly the same argument to what? Well done, Wada. It's the thermal stability of the carbonates, isn't it? Exactly the same argument. So as you go down, the cationic radius increases, the charge density decreases, which they didn't mention. It polarizes less, and therefore the nitrate ion gets distorted less, and therefore it is more stable. So a barium nitrate, the in barium nitrate, the nitrate ion is distorted less, and therefore it's harder to break apart because it's it's you know it's uh, it's relatively healthy if you like. So if I heat up magnesium nitrate, the nitrate ion is already distorted and it's quite easy to break apart and uh, to thermally decompose. Are we all good with that? Does that make sense? Can I move on? Excellent. One is good. Kettle off is good. Well done. Now a quick now the, this next one is a little bit more complicated. This is the sulfates. All right. So I don't mind doing this because it's quite, it's a bit, I'm not, nice bit of physical chemistry and I like physical. All right. This is the solubility of the sulfates. Now, before I go on, I'm going to put two people on the spot uh, Laurel and Basadi. Was it in your notes that it's hydration energy for the uh, thermal decomposition of nitrates? Is it in your notes? No, <laughs> for the sulfate. But we don't do the thermal stability of the sulfates, Laurel. All right, we only do the thermal stability of nitrates and carbonates. Anyway, the sulfates. Let's have a look at um, two concepts here. Okay, first of all, let's look at uh, hydration. Hi, oopsie daisy, hydration. Let's have a look at magnesium, iron. There's a magnesium ion. There's a calcium ion. Oh, there's a bit of like, like a potato. And there's a barium ion. All right. Oh, God. They're not very good, are they? All right. And these are all in the gaseous state. Okay. Now I'm going to plunge them all into water. Okay. And there's my magnesium. There's my calcium. And there's my barium. I'm going to plunge them all into water. So this is Mg2 plus, 
this is CA2+, plus, and this is BA2+. Plus. Now, a water molecule, I'm sure you...